Hi, everybody. Welcome to this product briefing. We've got some exciting feature news from Lou. Uh, uh, got Ollie, who's a, a regular now. And uh, Ollie, do you just want to introduce yourself for anybody that hasn't uh, spoken to you before? Yeah. Hi, everyone. So I'm Ollie Lifely. I'm head of sales here in, in the UK for Lua. Awesome. So Ollie, we've got some, some new features and new omnichannel capabilities. If you could just give us a quick recap of the, the product today, and then we could talk about what's new, if that's okay. Yeah, absolutely. Very excited to bring this one to market. It's been highly requested for a long time, as you can imagine. I thought a good starting point would just to have a really quick recap of what we've already got out there. So we have advanced enterprise routing. So these are our informal contact center modules. And we've got that quite unique mo pricing model here with a license per service. So that essentially means you can license the group of users rather li than licensing every individual user. With those, we get some really nice live and historical dashboards. We get some really nice workflow editing tools so we can add announcements, IVRs. We can do some parameter routing. With enterprise routing, we've also got the ability to integrate into third-party CRMs and other platforms using the, the Power Automate connector. Yeah, that, that, that Power Automate and Power Platform stuff is super powerful. We did a, a, a briefing on that, and the, the, obviously you then leverage the whole of the Power Platform in terms of your integrations, which is cool. Yeah, exactly. So that, yeah, that, that's a big kind of selling point for, for enterprise routing. And then for those more traditional, more formal contact centers, what we've got our per, per user per month, um, contact center license. So that includes your more traditional features like skills routing, uh, listening into more flexible and uh, dynamic dashboards, parameter routing. Yeah, we've got that more traditional fully fledged contact center license. And up to this stage, that's been for voice routing. But what we've done is we've added a omni-channel license into that. So across any of these modules, you can add our attendant console. So that's our reception and operator switchboard module. You can add Interact, which has been around for a while now. So that's our video product. So that allows you to route video sessions and screen share sessions from a website into an enterprise routing or contact center. Uh, but the new one, which is what we're here to talk about today, so is an add-on for the contact center which will allow you to route on the channel interactions. Yeah, it's super exciting. And from this diagram, you, you can pick any of these add-ons on top of the contact center. So I don't have to have interact to get omnichannel or omnichannel to get interact. Is that right? Yeah, that, that, that's exactly it. We obviously want to keep the licensing model as, as straightforward as possible, but we also want to couple that with making it as flexible and adaptable as, as possible. So interact now is, is solely a, a video product. So. Uh, for those use cases where you want to uh, route a video call from a website directly to a video session in Teams, so keeping that experience in Teams. Uh, you can also then screen share and use the chat once you're connected in video. Um, but Omnichannel will allow you to take web chat, it will allow you to take email, and it will allow you to take other external tasks and route those via the contact center queues that, that you've already got set up. That's really exciting. I'm uh, excited to see see how the web chat and email. Are you, you going to demo it for us today? Yeah, I, I think we'll we'll take a look at email routing to today. I, th I think that gives it a, a really good taster for for what's uh, what's available there. So yeah, we'll take a look at that in a live demo. I think uh, live demo is always much more interesting than than a slideshow. So yeah, yeah, we'll jump into that. So let's let's ask the question everybody wants to know: pricing, Ollie. What's the what's the story here? Again, as with our other modules, we like to build an economy to scale into our pricing structure. So we have different volume bandings. So if you have uh, 25 to 50 or 25 to 49 licenses, for example, then it's 77 euros uh, for the voice license. And then you can add contact center on per user uh, for 15 euros a month. And then if you have slightly more agents and you fit into that 100 to 199 user banding, then it's 68 for the voice license, and then you can add contact center on for 11 euros a month. So you don't have to add the contact, the omni-channel uh, license on to everyone. You can pick and choose which teams need it. Typically, we find that maybe you don't need as many users for things like email or web chat as you do for voice. So you yeah. can select teams that have that omni-channel add-on. That's great that you give that flexibility. And you've given us a couple of examples here. There's other price breaks along the range. You've given us the high and low, haven't you? So uh, the uh, the bigger seat count you're talking dollars an agent for the actual voice piece and then the optional add-on per user of 11 dollars for those that need those email and web chat capabilities yeah exactly we put it in euros here but yeah we also have it in dollars oh. uh, and pounds and swiss francs so awesome 
Cool. So we can see here, Ollie, the uh, the Lua platform. So uh, take us through how best you want to explain it. Uh, we've got an email up here. Yeah, absolutely. So we've talked about email, web chat, and external tasks. So I think today we'll show this as an email coming in and being routed uh, by a Nimbus. I've got an email address here, which is set up assigned to a Lua queue. I'm just going to send this in as a test from my own personal email account. Yeah, so and this is email, in. right? So it could be externally facing, it could be support at, or it could be internally facing. And I see you've mapped an email through for the, the regular domain. So it's, it's forwarding through your exchange online to the queue. So to the user, it looks like a regular support at lua.com type email. Yeah, exactly. Any email address that you have an exchange, we, we can link to it to email. So a couple of things have happened. First of all, I'm showing you our dashboard here. So this is the same live dashboard that we have available in Enterprise Routing and Contact Center. I can see that task now has come into the queue. So we've got the source of that email. We, we know obviously who the sender is. It's in the queue at the moment. Yeah. We can also see which users we have available to handle those. So at the moment, it's only myself available to, to handle those interactions. And as that email is coming in, my Nimbus assistant is popping up there as a user to tell me that, that email is coming in. So I can accept or decline that there. A bit like a call, I can accept or decline it and it's going to pop up wherever I am on my dashboard. So there's no chance of me missing the fact that I've been sent an email. Yeah, that's cool. For, from a supervisor point of view, I like how email is part of the single dashboard and single conversation as far as uh, how my agents are doing. Yeah, exactly. So even if we wanted to mix email and voice, I could have them coming into a single service and I could see in my tasks, voice calls, emails, web chats, if we did want to mix them. I think most people would actually separate them out. But yeah, yeah. it's exactly the same dashboard view for any interaction. But if you do have agents multitasking, you've got the same set of reporting as in I can see how many emails Oli covered off and how many calls he covered off. Because some I have seen environments where they'll mix and match those with the same agent because calls might be quiet. I can keep going with emails or vice versa. Yeah, exactly. So now I've accepted that, we can see that email is connected to, to myself. We can also see which users have been assigned to which interactions. We're all here able to connect with instant messages and, and emails, okay? So I'm now busy, okay? I'm not available because I'm now in an email interaction. It's connected to me. So, that, so as a supervisor, I can see I'm now connected to that email. So let's jump across to the, the user view. So now I'm connected to that email. I'm going to handle that email in my sessions, okay? So in my sessions, we can still pull through some CRM details. So if we have some CRM details about that person, we can pull them through in the session details. Mm -hmm. We could create a screen pop still if we wanted to. So if we wanted to pop out a screen, uh, a CRM screen pop, we, we can do just like a voice call. Now I'm connected to that email. I can see this email now in my session. So I can handle it in here. I can also full screen it here. So now I can just respond to this email as I would any other email. And it's a very similar layout. Um, to responding in Outlook. So I've got my formatting here. I can add people here. I can yeah. add priorities and I can send that um, here. So I can send something back. So I say, thanks for your email. And then we can just send that across. And now it's handled. And now I'm essentially available in Nimbus to take another interaction. So if we were to go back to my agent dashboard or to my supervisor dashboard, I'm now available because I've handled that email and I've been available for 15 seconds. Nice, cool. It's nice how it's all integrated from a user experience as well. Great. Let's take a look at the admin side of things and how we actually set up um, the, the workflow. Just like a, a voice workflow, we can use our workflow editing tool to set up an, an email workflow. We also have a couple of other options here in our workflows now. We have IM, so if we wanted to integrate web chats, uh, we can build a workflow with IM, and we also have external task routing. Yeah, what's the external task routing? Is that third-party ticketing systems or how does that work? Yeah, it, ex exactly that. So I think the best way to think about this, any system with, with an API or a webhook, we can route a task with using Nimbus. So Nimbus's core competency is routing interactions to the right people based on availability, skills, everything else. Um, yeah. But what we are also really good at is the reporting, as you've seen. Not only do we want to use Nimbus to route emails and instant messages, if you've got a ticket coming into a queue and you've got some support agents, for example, we can route that ticket via Nimbus. We will still pop the ticket in the service now or in the Salesforce or in the CRM, but we're using Nimbus to do the routing. So you've got a, a flexible routing engine and you've got all your skills based, you've got your power 
platform integrations on the other side. So that that could be API in from anything in theory. You offered your you know custom some kind of social media integration or say Salesforce or web forms even. You could still route those through based on the requirement. Yeah, exactly. Any task that you want to route to an agent, we, we can do with external task routing. That might be SMS, social media, that might be ticketing, that might be emails, for example. You might want to keep your all your emails in your CRM, but then just route those emails out using external yeah. tasks. Yeah, so you, yeah, that's cool. Nice. Um, so let's take a look at the email workflow here, but all of these have very similar um, kind of options once we get into the workflow. So We'll give it a name and we will assign it to an organization unit to make sure the access and control is, is all just, um, aligned with, with our RBAC policy. And now we're just in a blank workflow. In the top right here, we have various activities and now we can start building the desired uh, flow for that email. And as I said, this is similar for voice, it's similar for IM, and it's similar for external tasks. What a lot of our customers would probably like to start with is check opening hours so we can do some time of day routing. We can make different routing decisions on that email, whether we're open or closed or in some sort of special routing period. So when we're open, let's say we actually want to check the availability of users. So the first thing we want to do when we're open is actually make sure that there's somebody available. If there's nobody available, then maybe actually at that point we send a reply and we can design our reply down here and say, there's no agents available. Please expect to reply in the next week or however long we want. To yeah, make it. that's cool. Okay. So you can do the auto replies as well. We do the auto replies. We can even add parameters into there. So we can reply um, to, with a system parameter. We can actually reply with their name. Okay. So we can take their name out of their email and uh, put that cool. into the automatic reply. Um, or even taking that a step further, if we knew, for example, that they had an existing order from our CRM, we could say, okay, thanks for your email. If you're asking about order X, it's going to be delivered on this date. So we can take parameters from somewhere else and put those into the reply. Nice. Once we know somebody's available, then let's put that actually into the queue. So at that point, we can put that email into the queue and that will essentially queue with the agents at that point. And then we have all of our normal kind of queuing options here. So we can decide a Rona timeout. So that's how long we deliver to each agent before timing out and trying a new agent. I'm going to set my Rona timeout for 30 seconds. So it's going to target each agent for 30 seconds before moving on to a new agent. And then we can also add a max queue timeout. So we can say, okay, after that email has been in the queue for maybe 45 minutes, we're going to send another automatic reply because nobody answered it within that time frame. Okay, yeah. so we're going and, to and could send I route, another Could I route here reply. based on who is emailing me? So if I know that this customer has VIP support, I could send that to a different queue versus this customer who I don't know who they are. So they go to the default queue. A hundred percent. So we, we also have our check parameter routing here. So here we can use some regex checks. So let's say we wanted to do a regex check around a VIP cooler. Um, we can add that in as a check. Yeah. Um, and then we can route out to a different queue at that point. So if nobody matches that check, they go down here. And if they do match that VIP check, we send them down there. Maybe they get a different custom reply there to say, thank you very much. Important customer uh, will be right on the case. Yeah. Or I'm running the internal IT help desk. If it's execs or above, I want to route them to st straight to a priority queue. Yeah, exactly. And, the, um, and all we might want to do with that when they're VIP is actually just give them a higher distribution priority. So we yeah. say, okay, if they're a VIP, we actually just make that distribution priority very high. So they go right to the top of the, the queue there. Yeah, nice. And all the, the yeah. groups of users and the queues, those are mapping to the same queues I have in voice. So if I've already gone and set those up, I can use those. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. So in terms of our users, all we have to do to enable them for these modalities, if I look at uh, myself here, we just have a simple tick box against these users. So in the user profile, I can then add these modalities. So I'm assigned to IM, I'm assigned to external task and email. So we just assign those modalities to those users. Oh, very cool. So I think that kind of wraps things up. We, we've shown you um, the supervisor view. We've shown you the user view and also um, some of the administration and routing possibilities there. Awesome. Is that good to go now, Oli? People can try that out? Um, so this is coming out in the next um, major release. It's been in beta for, for a couple of months now. It will be enabled um, in, in one of the next uh, feature releases. Yeah, look out for that in, in our release notes.
Awesome. Cool. Thanks for taking the time, Ollie. I appreciate you sharing the detail of how that works and the, the pricing, always useful to see. And uh, yeah, we'll have to loop around and do the, uh, do the web chat one in a future briefing. Awesome. Cheers, Tom. Thanks very much. Thanks. Thank you.